So, hello everyone. I'm Paul Plotkin, Senior Account Executive at GNG Technologies, and thank you for joining us today for the fourth in our Product Spotlight webinar series, focusing in on Tightrope's Cablecast line and delivering content through OTT platforms. GNG hosts this series every second and fourth Wednesday of the month, featuring industry leading manufacturers, including JVC Pro, Broadcast Picks, Shore, Panasonic, and many others. So please look for future invites from GNG, and we certainly hope to see you here again. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel where we're going out live right now, and also to view past webinars. Including his years advocating for community access TV in the 80s, right up to present day, representing the leading broadcast automation manufacturer. There are a few in our industry that have a more diverse career than Randy Visser. Over that span, Randy has served as a station manager, trainer, broadcast engineer, content producer, and municipality board member. He's consulted and designed countless control rooms, fly pack systems, full studio build outs, and of course, playback systems. And I can personally speak to Randy's expertise Prior to taking his current position at Tightrope, Randy installed systems for clients of mine that are still operational. And five years later, they're still loyal clients. So without further ado, I'm very happy to present Mr. Randy Visser. Randy. Good job, Paul. Thank you Thank for you, that buddy. glowing introduction, man. I, I didn't realize I had done all that in the... Much deserved. Yeah, you did. I was there for a lot of it. Been 40 years, what a fun ride. Thank you, G&G so &G Video, for hosting this. Uh, Rob, thanks for doing this. I think this is great. We, since the pandemic, all of us have had to readjust uh, to the in-person meetings. And uh, we do a lot of these and it's it's a great way to sort of show what we're doing. We're, uh, uh, as, as Paul was saying, we're a video playout server uh, company provider. Uh, and, uh, you know, these systems are all remote controlled. So it's very easy to show this. We're going to log into one of our remote servers here in a couple of minutes. So we can kick the tires a little bit and I can show you what it, what it can do. But I want to zoom out and we're, we're going to do a sort of an overview of the product first and give everybody a chance to sort of get their heads wrapped around what we do as a company and our, our basic product line. So uh, I think I'm going to share my screen next. Let's see if this works. There we go, Paul. Can you see that? I certainly can. Perfect. I'll move this little GUI down here. This is our website, folks. If, if you're interested in this product line, please check out cablecast.tv. It's a very comprehensive site. We have a lot of information on here. We're going to look at a video in just a minute. Um, but I wanted to, to let you see that there's um, uh, tabs at the top here that uh, allow you to see a lot of the various configurations we have for these servers. Uh, of course, you know, a lot of what's happening in this segment of the market right now is people are trying to get their video content um, to all of the platforms that people are now watching television. So obviously that includes things like Apple TV uh, and Roku, the over-the-top platforms, as well as websites. And uh, Cablecast does that. Just, just to give you a quick sample, I've got a couple of uh, websites that are customers of ours that I often show in my demos. I thought I'd pull these up a minute just as an example. Here's Current TV. They uh, are um, a county in North Carolina, Dare County. And as you can see, they've got video embedded right into this website, which is, you know, which is what people are looking for. So people in this county can come in, they, they feature uh, an episode right up at the top, and then they've got links here that bring up video on demand content. And these are thumbnails, and you can see that they're falling into these nice galleries, which is all part of the workflow with the cable cast system. You're basically going to ingest or record content on these servers and then identify, you know, categories and areas that you might want to use these videos that are unique to the, to the end viewer 
And as they've done here in Dare County, um, you know, these thumbnails represent the videos that when I click on this thumbnail, it's going to open up immediately. And this is a beautiful Nothing. HD video. If I were to bring this up on the full screen, I mean, take a look at the quality of this video. And this is a day at the beach, but off. the power of the ocean deserves everyone's respect. Yeah. What a nice, what a nice looking image that is. So this is video that they've uploaded to their Cablecast server, and they're utilizing the uh, content delivery network, uh, or we call it Reflect, which is, is the cloud service used to, to make sure that anybody who clicks on one of these uh, thumbnails is going to be able to see this video. In other words, if you had 100 people and they wanted to watch, here are the live buttons for this town, if I wanted to watch uh, the Dare County government feeds, I could click on this uh, window oh, and it again, it's going to pull that streaming content up for as many people as need uh, to click this and to watch this video. And that's the whole point is we're, we're making the content available on these different platforms that people are using. Um, here's another interesting um, example. I just wanted to quickly pull this up and we're going to look at this a little more as we go into the into the webinar here but this is another example of a portal so part of what we're all trying to understand is all right a server has a piece of video a video file we can play that out what happens to it at that point how does the customer the end viewer get to that video how do we drive our community members and people within our businesses to get to these sites. Obviously, this is a website and you can see that it has something called the Cablecast public site at the end of the address. And that tells me that this is running off a reflect service for this particular town. This is a small town on the coast of Maine where I happen to live, Freeport, Maine. If anybody has ever heard of LL Bean, this is where their headquarters are and where the first store was right on the coast of Maine. And you can see what they're doing here is they're using our system. And this portal is one click off the town's website. So here people can watch what's happening. Uh, looks like the town council meeting is playing. This schedule gets pushed up to this website automatically each day that you uh, update the schedule that's playing out on the, on the page. And I can click that play button. And we should see the council Staff meeting, there it is. And, and where the council is. So there it comes up and we're watching the council meeting streaming again through this reflex service onto the website. And then as many people uh, as needed can watch this at one time in high definition. The other piece that's going on here, folks, is we've got, as I said, on demand, video on demand. And when we log into the server in just a minute, um, I'm going to show you how easy the workflow is. I think, you know, when you look at the marketplace and some of our competitors, you're going to see a lot of interfaces and things that have to happen when you're trying to move content from one system to another. One of the beautiful things about the software that our company has developed over the years is it's really designed for specifically for this type of user, not necessarily a television station, right? But somebody who is interested in using video as a communication tool and now needs to find a way to distribute this to their viewers, whether it's on a website or whether it's on one of these over the top platforms. So I'm gonna come down here to the council meetings and you can see that they've posted um, years worth of council meetings uh, on this particular site. Uh, let's see here, I'm gonna come down and click on this particular meeting. And I wanted to just, you know, demonstrate here that one of the features that the Cablecast system has is you have the ability to add chapter marks or sometimes they're called index marks directly to these videos, either while they're being recorded on the system. And that's just a matter of clicking on the plus bar on your, on your keyboard. And that puts a mark into the video as it's being recorded. And then you can, uh, take those marks and add titles off something like a council agenda. And then as I click to any one of those chapter marks, 
I'm going to be able to go directly to that um, to that portion of the meeting. And that's a big deal uh, for municipal customers that are looking to get content for long form programming. People are interested in something particular. Here's a food truck uh, hearing on food trucks. That's what they want to see. That's an hour and 19 minutes into the meeting. With this system, you can post that meeting quickly as soon as it's done. The thumbnail shows up on all of the sites that you need it to show up on. And there you go. You've got these chapter marks. People can jump to what they need to see. And you've also got the ability to hang a PDF file, a document file right next to the video. And that can be downloaded or it can be used to, to you know, access these chapter uh, marks. So there's no other information exchange. When we so go again, a lot of important tools that customers and viewers are looking for all bundled right into the software for this system. All right, before we log into the server, I'm going to click on this tab and I wanna open this video and play this video for you. This is an overview of the system and what it does. And um, this is produced by our marketing director, Michelle. She does a great job and it's all compact and the visuals are here. So I wanna play this for everyone. And then afterwards we'll log into the server and, and take a little closer look at some of these features. So here we go. Cablecast Bio Video Servers offer a premium channel-in-a-box solution for cable operations looking for consolidated management of distribution on web, mobile, OTT, as well as social media live feeds. It has all the power, convenience, and efficiency you need to contribute and manage your content, as well as distribute and promote it on all digital platforms. With Cablecast, you can present your content your way with turnkey, branded web pages for your channel and apps for your VOD library, live streams, and programming schedule that come complete with social media sharing buttons. You can also use a complete set of APIs to integrate your dynamic schedule, live streams, and VOD playlists into your existing website or mobile app. Cablecast offers a web-centric workflow that is entirely remote and can be managed easily on mobile devices. The Cablecast automation software manages all of your sources, scheduling, and live switching directly in the web interface, including live network stream switching using the built-in encoder standard with every VIO video server. You can even manage all of your digital files directly in the web interface, including digital file uploading. Cablecast serves as a database for all your video's metadata and uses that data to dynamically update all of your viewing portals across all platforms. Add the Cablecast CG bulletin board software to get seamless graphic announcements, including short videos and a dynamic channel schedule showing what's next on your channel. Cablecast video servers are powering over a thousand cable operations, as well as school districts, municipalities, and more. So contact our team today to find out how Cablecast can work for your next project. Thank you, Michelle. Very well done. Cool. Uh, so that gives you an overview. And you can see here again that this is a this is a tool set that has a lot going on, um, much of which has to do with not just feeding a cable system or a cable channel. That's the that's the traditional market that we've all been working in. Um, but with our particular system here, again, you have the ability, and I'm going to go back to the website, and I just want to pull up some of what Michelle was talking about in terms of distributing this content to these new platforms. Here we have a picture of uh, somebody holding a phone. Now, if any of the webinar participants are interested uh, if you have your iPhone or your Android phone with you, uh, work with me a moment and just go into your phone and get into the app store on your platform. So um, in my case, I've got an iPhone. I just go into my app store and I'm typing in PCTV. That stands for Pittsfield Community Television, one of our customers in Western Mass. When you download the PCTV app, what you're looking at is a custom app that we've built 
for this municipality so that they can take their live streams and all of that VOD content in galleries along with the chapter marks and put that directly into these devices where people are watching television. And that'll give you a sense of what we can do for you um, in terms of distribution of your content. Again, the real trick on this is that the workflow is super easy to use. And I wanna demonstrate that for you next. Um, and while I'm setting this up, I just wanna encourage everyone who's participating in this webinar today to please start dropping some questions or comments into the chat window in your Zoom um, app uh, and uh, engage me with some questions. We're gonna have a question and answer period uh, towards the end of the webinar. And I'd love to hear what you think, questions that you have so I can address some of your interest uh, directly here uh, during this live webinar. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna head over to this tab and you can see it's labeled front door. That's what we call the portal that you would use to, to basically log into your server. Again, I wanna make this point. I happen to be in Maine where I live in my home and I'm about to log into a server through this browser that's located in Minneapolis. So everything that I need to do on our server can be done remotely as I'm about to demonstrate. And I also wanna make the point folks, I happen to have one of these systems in the town that I live in. I help to manage the channel. Paul mentioned in, in the introduction that I've been involved in community media for many, many years. And I, I feel it's a really important thing that we're doing in our communities to provide these non-commercial channels and uh, government transparency, um, You know, let people see what's going on in your communities. Um, and this, this is a system that I'm using in my town. And when I travel on the road for my job, I'm often at airports or in hotels and people call and say, hey, Randy, we got a problem or can we update this bulletin board? Absolutely, I log right in with my phone and all of the screens adapt to my, to my iPhone. So I can literally sit in a, um, in a airport um, waiting area and update the server or switch the server, start recording, whatever I need to do, it's pretty wild. All right, here we go. Let's go ahead and log in then. So the front door gives me access to the server and it also gives you as the administrator or the owner of the system, the ability to, to uh, give other people access to the system. So we're not gonna spend any time to look at this, but the front door has a management subsystem that allows you to, to give permissions to different users to come in and do different things on the system, maybe update the bulletin board, but not you know uh, schedule programming, that kind of thing. So folks, what we're looking at here is the dashboard of that server in Minneapolis that I was talking about. This is our demo, demo server, and we've got Your City TV running on here. I can see what's playing on the channel. I've got a couple of dashboard highlights at the top that tell me what are going on with my servers. And then I've got these icons on the left that represent sub menus that we're gonna use to operate the system. Um, I'm gonna click into this first sub menu, which is the scheduling GUI. And, Obviously, this is where if you're interested in using these systems to play content out, whether it's a website or a cable channel or even the over-the-top platforms, remember they have those live feed buttons. So you can, you know, program these feeds to happen 24-7. And it's very easy. We're going to come into the system and just choose whatever date in the calendar we want uh, to do this uh, work on. I'll go ahead and um, let's just go into, you know, like December 13, I'll pick a random date here. And what that does is it gives me uh, a 24 hour calendar that starts at midnight and goes to 1130 uh, that day. And these are half hour increments that you're set up to schedule programming with. There's already a, a program that's been scheduled in here you can see we've got a little, uh, looks like a little uh, robot here. And that's because this is part of our auto scheduling feature. And what that means is that you can set up rules that will literally operate the system uh, automatically. 
So if you have things that are happening, let's say you have a, a council, city council meeting, or um, maybe it's a, a, a user's training seminar that you do, you know, the first Monday of the month at 10 a.m. or 7 p.m. at night, whatever it happens to be, there's a, a beautiful auto scheduling process in here that allows you to set the system up to pull those feeds in, push them out over to the cable channel, push them out to your website, push them over to the top, Apple TV, your iPhones, and you can watch this content immediately. And um, that's the way the system works, right? The auto schedule will actually drop that into the schedule multiple times. So I might have a live feed coming in you know, at 10 a.m. some morning, that's picking up this daily feed reply, uh, replay. This is a daily feed. So this would be something that's coming into the system every day, the same time. We're passing it through. People are watching it. It's in the schedule. But then the system is going to record it and drop it into another slot later in the week or later that day. It's all automated. We'll help you set this up. And by the way, when I say we, what I'm talking about here is a super support team that Cablecast has been developing over the years that we've been selling this product. We've really been working in this niche of the market where people tend to need a lot of help, hand-holding. And that's understandable. This is not a broadcast system. This is meant for non-professional video people. And we have free support, which means you literally put a ticket into the system and someone will come right back in They'll log into your server, they'll give you a call, and you can begin to work on any issues you have with the system, whether you need some help with something or whether we need to go in and configure something on your system. It's all done remotely, and our support people are tracked. We, th we, we track the threads for these you know, support conversations, and then we get grades at the end of that. And I'm happy to say that, um, the average grade we're getting is 99.9% is .9 satisfaction. In other words, uh, our support people are, are getting A grades from our customers. And again, I think that's a big deal when you're getting into these systems um, and, and you need the help, we're there for you and it's not gonna cost you extra money. I think that's a really big deal. Um, so um, we're talking about the scheduling uh, workflow. We've got a day in December here that we're looking to schedule. On the right, you see these boxes represent the content that I've either recorded on the server as part of a, a workflow, or I've just uploaded it from a server or from my computer. And I'm just gonna start clicking on the content here, the shows, and dragging my mouse over to time slots and clicking it down and sticking it into that time slot. So. Here we've just scheduled tips from support um, for 7 a.m. I've got actually a little green arrow here that I can push that will show me what that video looks like if I wanna check that. I've got a little CC box here. That's telling me that this particular show has been closed captioned. That's another feature these systems have built into the actual system. You, you literally, buy a bundle of hours from Paul, and then there's a dashboard that you can monitor that will count those hours down as you use them a la carte, any way you want. And uh, basically, for example, let me put a, let me put this show up um, live from the park. Let's drop this into the schedule a moment. You can see this is a little different icon because this is coming as a live feed rather than a file that we've uploaded. And as a result, I may want to record that feed. Remember, that's one of the things you can do. It's going to play out whatever feed we've configured to hit the network at that particular time, 9 a.m. I've got a little red button here that I'm just going to click on, and that literally sets up a record of that show. So now I'm recording the show. Here's the file name. I can choose how I want that to be recorded. And then off we go. I've actually then got a second menu, which I'm gonna to try to reveal to us here. See if I can move this around a little bit. This is where we get the live uh, closed captions. 
So again, I'm gonna choose the network stream encoder built into this system. And essentially once I do this and I've purchased those bundle of hours, the system will send the feed that we're about to pull th into the system first up to the cloud where it gets transcribed in real time. That transcription or the closed caption text gets inserted into the file and pushed back to the encoder where it gets recorded on the server passed through over to your cable channel and the over the top channels that people are watching on so that every time from then on that you either schedule that or watch the video on demand you'll see the closed caption at the bottom if you choose to look at that through your browser and again this is a really nice feature for municipalities that need to do closed captioning businesses that need to to make sure they're covering uh customers that need closed captioning it's it's a great, um, again, it's built into the system and cost-wise, we're looking at about 11 to 14 cents a minute, which if you look at the marketplace for closed captioning is, is a good price. I will say just from, you know, a sales, a sales person's <laughs> pitch here that uh, Cablecast has always been an affordable solution in this marketplace. So, um, it looks like a lot going on here and there really is, but I wanna make the point that we've always been working with municipality public entities as well as corporate and, and other private you know, customers. But for public entities, we need to be competitive. We need to make sure these systems are affordable. And we've been doing this for over 30 years. And you can talk to any of these thousands of customers and they're gonna tell you, it's affordable, they take care of us, we love it, and it's a solid system, and, and that's what you're looking for. Back to the demo here, I'm showing you just some features of how the system works. For example, I could take any one of the shows in this day's schedule, I could click this box and choose the entire day's schedule, copy this, and simply repeat it maybe the next Monday and paste it in. Off we go. Um, I've got undo buttons and I've got redo buttons so I can back up and go forward with my workflow as I'm working through this system at any time. Um, so I think you're getting the sense of how this works. It's very intuitive. And again, we've been working on this software for 30 years. We continue to upgrade it. We got a big feature release coming next week. And uh, this is gonna give everybody the opportunity to do archiving of video. It's called Smart Asset Management Feature. And just, you know, it gives you a sense that this is a company that has active developers. We have a crew of six people working on the software can consistently to improve it. And uh, so when you hit your wag into this company, you can know that we're going to be there going forward and we're gonna to respond to whatever kinds of needs or issues that come up in this really fast moving environment that we're working in with uh, digital video. And it is fast moving as you all know. So we've been looking at the scheduling uh, system here. I wanna point out a couple of things. First of all, I wanna just click on this autopilot force matrix and make the point here, folks, that you can get in and operate this system manually at any level. What we're looking at is a screen that shows me all the incoming sources that are available and the outgoing sources. I mean, we have customers that are doing this from as small as a bio stream server that's just hooked up to a network at a corporate setting and pushing content to a website, very inexpensive to do nice nice solution for getting video to a website or over the top we also have customers uh that work with paul uh that are you know have multiple cable channels and multiple websites and multiple places they're they're passing this content to so you can see that you've got to have the ability to get in and manage this this is a real easy way to do it here's my output if i needed to go directly to a feed coming from uh, a live uh, studio feed, I can just click this button and it's just like pushing a button on a router and boom, we've got a new 
uh, feed going to the output of that server into that channel or whatever path we have for that feed. I'll go back. Uh, and, and actually this button is important to just point out that you've got the ability here to record network streams, for example, that are coming in or feeds that are coming in through what we call baseband video. So that would be local to your facility. If you have a, a, a TriCaster switcher or a ROS or some sort of a switcher and you wanna feed that into the server, it's designed for that to happen. Here's where we can actually re hit the record button and, and start transcribing closed caption if we wanted to do that. Um, and, and then one last thing I'm going to show you, we can look at this uh, in a little different pattern. And I've got the ability here to take this all offline and override the automatic, you know, features of the system. So you may have a playlist of content scheduled to go out at maybe nine o'clock in the evening. And you've got a live show you're doing from seven to nine. Uh, but you don't know, maybe that live show goes a little long. You don't want the system to just go in and take over that live show. So we've just basically said to the system here, put override the schedule and go into manual mode. And then when I resume and go back to the schedule, I can even put a crawl up here uh, to let people know what's going on. So that's important and it gives you total flexibility. Remember, I was talking about how we can do this from an iPhone. I take our little camera from my town. We have an encoder built into a JVC camera that I'm sure Paul carries. And we can take that camera's audio and video and stream it directly into the server from the library once a month when we have our libraries uh, featured um, our, uh, authors uh, talk. And it's beautiful. I do that all from my iPhone right at the library. I switch in and off we go. I can hit the record button. You know, it's all done right on my iPhone. That's pretty cool. Let's take a look then at the bulletin board, which when we don't see content scheduled here on this uh, daily uh, uh, playback schedule, these open uh, areas are uh, going to default to the bulletin board, which by the way, is a very sophisticated um system i'm going to click here on this tab to give you an example of a template that we use uh, for this bulletin board system so this is what the viewers would see if they if there was no content scheduled during that live stream over the day um you know there's a break in the afternoon and suddenly this information comes up in this form and and you know it, it can take different forms but essentially what you have are zones of information. So here's a zone, here's another zone, there's a zone over here, and you can see the content changing on these zones. The content is represented in what we call bulletins. So here's a live radar feed bulletin. Here's a live feed talking about um, uh, air quality index. Um, over here, you're going to see in a moment, the schedule come up for this particular channel. Here's local traffic conditions. You can take live feeds. Um, here's an example. I just really wanted to point out in the little town that I live in, in Gray, Maine, here's our playback channel embedded into a website. And you can see here, we've actually got feeds coming in from the local newspaper. These are RSS feeds that are picked up off a website so we can give our community uh, updated information, you know, by the hour from the local news source, which is, I think, really an important uh, feature to, to make available to your community. All right, back to the server. Let's go into this tab then called CG. And I'll open a CG page up here. And essentially what we'll do here is I'm just gonna show you how easy it is to add a bulletin to the sequence. So again, this is what the output will look like. This is the zone we're gonna work on. It's called announcements. So I'm in my server. I go to access, that's the name of the channel. I go to announcements. I click on bulletins. There's all the bulletins that are sequencing through that zone. 
I can go in and edit any one of those bulletins with this edit pen, or I can come over with my mouse and say, let's say we wanna put a new bulletin that sequences between the traffic and the weather. I'm gonna click down my mouse and it's gonna open up a new bulletin um, GUI or interface. Here we have templates that I can choose to work with. You know, I can upload photos or my own content. And then this is the dynamic content I was talking about earlier. So we've got RSS feeds that we can set up here from any web sources. And this is powerful once you see what's out there and you can get a sense that you can start to feed information to these end customers, end viewers that's unique to something that you're promoting on that site. If I wanted to create a new bulletin uh, with a template, for example, let's say we've got a holiday coming up here and I wanna put this holiday title in, Super easy to use here, guys. I've got these tabs running along the top of this page and it's always gonna be the same workflow. The graphic piece is over on the left here in the layout. So these are graphic blocks. You see, we've got a title block, a subtitle, text, and then we've got a graphic down below here. Let's say I wanna get in and change this subtitle message. The first thing I may wanna do is think about what is the layout I mean, do I wanna move this around? I can do that. Now remember folks, I'm doing this on a computer, but it's actually in my home in Maine, but this is actually happening on a server in Minneapolis, and yet I'm seeing it in my screen in real time. And that tells you that this is something, again, you can do from an iPhone. I update my bulletins all the time. People call, so you got the date wrong. No problem, I can log in with an iPhone come into this if I wanted to change what it looks like, easy enough to do. And I'm gonna see that in real time. Now I'm gonna to come to the second tab and we're gonna take a look at the actual text that's in the subtitle. So here's my subtitle. And you know, if I add an S to this, I'll see that S pop up and I can change whatever this says in real time. And then if I wanna schedule it, I can schedule it to start, you know, if it's a holiday, I may want this to start a couple of weeks prior to Thanksgiving or Christmas and then stop, you know, after that holiday end date. And uh, if I do nothing else, it'll just drop into that sequence we were looking at here and it'll be up on 10 second uh, dwell time and it'll drop in at the point that we asked it to drop in between those other two announcements. I've actually got the ability to change how long it stays on the screen. I can even put video clips into these zones. So if I want a video to play out, you know, at some point during the day, a promo, a PSA, something that's coming up in the community that's been produced, put it in the schedule, put it in the bulletin board as a unique piece of video, play it out every five to 10 minutes and off we go. I'm gonna need to make sure if I've got audio in the background, maybe I've got some music playing behind that bulletin board, I wanna fade the channel background audio and I click on that button. So you can see how easy this is to do. And again, you can give access to different people to come in and just do this work on the server as opposed maybe to doing the scheduling that we looked at earlier. All right, I'm talking a lot and I'm talking fast. So I hope that everybody's keeping up with me. Um, I'm gonna take a deep breath here a moment and check in with Paul to see how we're doing. How are we doing, Paul? <laughs> we're doing good. Actually, there was a question relating to that and um, priorities that you can assign different users. Uh, okay, let's look at that a minute. That's yeah. the front door we were talking about. Coming into the front door, here's the management. Here are my, my accounts. And, you know, I can assign roles to these right. uh, people that give me the ability to create a show record, to set the autopilot, uh, uh, to, you know, to create in cable uh, cast CG, the ability to create bulletins, but not approve them. Maybe, you know, you have a student or somebody 
they can make the bulletin and then the oper the administrator will approve and Admin put it has in to the approve. Right. Yeah. So these get set up and then it's real easy for people to log in from wherever they are, you know, participate in the operation of the system. It gets tracked, by the way. So if, you know, there's a problem, we can go back and say, well, this person who was logged in did this at that time. All the work that you're doing in this system, folks, gets tracked in a database. It gets backed up every night. Uh, you can choose to have a, a copy of that backed up. So if we ever have a problem with your drive and we might lose some of this, it's not a big deal for us to log right in, pull that content back and get you right back to, to where you left off the last time you saved that system. So theoretically, you can have six different users all you with have hundred different users. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. Whatever. All yeah. With different roles or um, uh, priorities that they can partake in. Right. Exactly. All to be, and, and you can have multiple admin. Correct. Correct. Okay. That's right. And it's easy to edit that. Uh, and again, I mean, we have a lot of customers who are doing this shared duty. You know, in, in some right. cases, there are communities that are doing, you know, multiple channels and they have the school doing one channel, the government town hall doing another channel. They can be combined into one system because it's remote control. The person right. in the school logs in. It doesn't matter where that server is located. And you can restrict access from the school to government back and forth. Sure, sure. And the other cool thing here, just, just to make this point, I think this is really important. Uh, when we were looking at the town of Freeport here earlier and looking at ways you can get this content to places where people are watching it, I was talking you know, about these galleries. And what's really nice with this system is you can take, you, you basically design, it's, you set up a rule that says, hey, every time I bring in a show that has the title planning board, put it into this gallery. And that link can then be shared with that entity. So, I mean, think of the various ways this could be utilized, whether it's a municipality, a school system, even a corporate user that wants to be able to say, let's take the safety division, put their content into this gallery, uh, take the tech division, put their videos into this gallery, and then the links become available. So on the website or through an email, you can just say, hey, tech people, click on this link and you will see all the videos you need to watch. And that was, that was one of the other questions. So basically you can write rules. Right. The file has certain words in the file name. It'll be filtered into that right. affected folder, right? right. Yeah. And it's very sophisticated. I, I, I don't want to go too far into the weeds here, folks, but, you know, those rules, uh, for example, in the auto scheduling, we talked about how, you know, the system pulls in a new show every day, right? Um, how does the system know that, that there's a new show coming in? Uh, you've given it a rule that says only use the show with the least amount of run counts. So it's, it's literally counting. How many times does this show run? If it's already run once or twice during the day previous and we've got a new show, it's going to look for that new show, which hasn't run, and it's going to drop that into the slot. Into the open slot, right. Yeah, so the automation is something that is looking at metadata. When we, when we were into the uh, server, and I'm going to go back to the server a minute and just make this point. When we were into the server here, I was going to show everybody the workflow and how easy this is to get this VOD content to these sites. So what happened is we were looking at show records and, and over here, this is just, you know, all the records, but up on top, here's where this search engine is set up and I can search under the metadata in the show records and save those searches so that every time I come back in here, if I want to find my city meetings, there they are. If I want to find my feeling fit club meetings, there they are, right? So it's using the metadata in the show records. Let's look at one of these show records. I'll click on it here. 
And there it goes. It opens the second sub menu. And we're looking at show number 259. Each of these boxes represents metadata. So as I scroll down, <clears throat> these are the categories I have. I can create my own or I can work with categories that are already here. So, you know, if this was a council meeting, you'd click council meeting and suddenly the system would know that the council meetings need to be available anytime you, you know, click on that search for council meetings. And that could that could mean that it's pushing it into a gallery or into that little strip so you can find it. Nice workflow. Now, here's what happens with the on-demand. And this is, this is why I was saying, um, I think this is really a, a beautiful design of the software. <clears throat> if I uploaded this file or recorded it, and I want this now to be available in a gallery on Apple TV that I've set up, right? It's a new show. I've just brought it into the system. All I do is click on this button, enable. Click save. And as soon as I've done that, the show is available in this sub menu called on demand. It literally makes a H264 copy of the original file. <clears throat> and then it makes that available for me so I can play this file. I can scrub through this file and any place I scrub, I can add one of those chapter marks. This would be the workflow if somebody were doing a meeting and they had taken notes and they said five minutes into the meeting or 15 minutes into the meeting, you know, Bob, uh, Bob speaks or, or whatever, right? That little click Bob speaks is now a link that's available. You can literally share this, or you could take that link and you can text it to somebody and say, check this video out or check this piece of the video out. Right. I've even got the ability guys to make a direct link and put that into a website or embed it as a window into a website. Super easy to do here. Um, now, the other piece of this is like, once I've done this, again, keep in mind, I just gotta hit this retranscode button because the system is gonna go in and add this information to the, all those existing files and then update those files in the cloud. So when I go to, uh, you know, the, uh, I got some windows I got to watch out for here. <laughs> if I went back to my current TV and I clicked on demand and they had just added that beach safety thumbnail, it would suddenly be available. Boom, right there. Mm. And it's ready to watch. Um, and, and that's all you have to do. There's no logging in to other systems. Um, and just to make the point, I'd like to play one more video. How are we doing on time, by the way, Paul? I got a short video I wanted to show people. Um, we've got 10 minutes. Cool. Let me play this video. I think this is a nice way to kind of wrap some of this up and get back to where we started in talking about not only the feature of features of a system like this, but how do you get video to these new platforms that people are watching? Apple TV. If any anybody watching this webinar has ever tried this, you know it's a big lift. It's difficult. We've taken care of all that. You basically purchase upfront a custom channel. We'll build it for you. And let me show you what it looks like. I've got a video that's being played on CCX Media. This is a large um, multiple channel system up in the Minneapolis, Minnesota area. Um, this is a video they're running on their website to help people understand that they can watch this on these other platforms. So let me play this and I'll talk about it afterwards. Here we go. CCX Media, your source for great local programming, is now available on Apple TV. Our free app allows you to stream all three of our channels live. You will also have access to our large on-demand library, including daily newscasts and full sporting events. To find us, go to the App Store and search CCX and download our free app. Then sit back and enjoy all your favorite local content. The CCX Media app, now available on Apple TV, coming soon to Roku. Roku, Google TV, uh, Fire Stick, Android, and iOS uh, as well. Now we have six platforms. We're pushing this, and you can see from this video that this is this is essentially 
uh, the look that you're getting on these uh, portals, right? Sure. You, you open up a portal and you'll be able to, you know, crawl through these various galleries. Uh, we just had a product meeting yesterday and they're, they're actually adding more features to these sites now. The, um, the chapter marking will be available. You're gonna have the ability to put up more links back to your websites and more information uh, for you know people looking at these videos. So again, I wanna make the point here that we're not just slapping this stuff up and forgetting about it. We have developers who are constantly talking to the customer base saying, what do you need to make this better? Cool, let's put it into the system. And the thing about this is, is this is the way content is, is being delivered, is, is only going to grow to be delivered with all of this OTT content and fast TV, uh, free advertised um, TV, uh, which, which is basically all of the menus that you see built into Samsung, LG, Yep. Sony um, televisions. Any smart TV you buy today, you know, they're, you'll have the as their own fast guide. And yep. um, through these, it's like I tell people, it's like having your own YouTube channel. Yeah, that's a, and that's exactly it. what it is. When we recently, um, when we recently moved in our new home, we dropped cable. I'm, I'm yep. sad to say we dropped. Most people have. I have to. You know, I, and, I love um, this because. Um, we have something called Cablecast. If you were just to type in Cablecast on any of these apps and download uh, the Cablecast app, you'll be able to see hundreds of our customers that are using this platform at no cost. I mean, we have, this is sort of a customer appreciation and, and helping people get these apps online. It's not branded. You have to go to Cablecast and then choose the town you want to watch. Right. But you know, your introduction set me up as being somebody who's into this. And I, I'll watch a movie with my wife at night and afterwards, you know, she'll go to bed and I'll, I'll go into cable cast and look at speeds coming in from all over the country, which yeah. I just love doing that. And it's, it's, you know, it's a cool. And it gives purpose. people the opportunity when, when you're moving from, from one place to another and yeah. want to yeah. keep abreast of what's going on in, in your original hometown or a, another town or city that you may have lived in. Yeah, this man. This is the way to do it. This is the way to do it. We have all the paths worked out. You can see the workflow is super easy. You log in, you know, you set it up in terms of what you want people to see, and then you forget about it. You know, you just push go and walk away, and you know that this stuff is going to go where it needs to go. You don't have to be logging in. You know, the servers have network configuration, so you can pull in these feeds, as I said, put them onto the channels, record them, close caption. What is it that you want to do? The system has all the tools built into it, and, and you know, people love it, free support. So you know, that, that was, with the five minutes left, that was one of the other questions. What are the different levels of support the tightrope offers? Well, we don't, we have only one, you know, special level called platinum, which, you know, is available for people who want super 24-7 uh, um, coverage. It also includes, um, uh, you know, if, if you have a server that needs to have uh, uh, RMA needs to be fixed, we'll send you a replacement, you know, while we fix that. For and you. does that does that replacement go out prior to the unit being received? Yeah, it's a 24 hour thing. Awesome. You know, you put a ticket in, we'll log in. If we determine that there's something wrong with our server that needs to be repaired, we'll send one right out to you as soon as you get it. You put it in, you send the other one back. You send the okay. Great. So but, I mean basically you guys, no downtime. <clears throat> correct. And you know, we help configure these systems along with you and, and, and your tech crew. Sure. So this is a, this is a sales path uh, for anybody watching that doesn't require that you have expertise on this. We'll, we'll walk you through the whole process, you know, give you suggestions for how to configure these systems. There's a lot of different ways to do this now. Um, and then, and then quote the system so you can see what it would cost, including installation, training, and free support for the life of the system. I mean, commissioning really, the system, sure. Yep. yep, we'll set it all up for you. And, you know, I, I say this um, 
with some pride, you know, um, I don't know if every manufacturer out there can do this, but I encourage anybody watching this uh, to, to reach out to Paul uh, for contacts from, you know, our other customers oh, feel absolutely. Free to reach out and talk to some of these people that are using this system. And I'm, I'm confident they're going to tell you, man, this company, they rock, they stand behind this and they're on top of it. Um, and they take care of us. That's what you want to hear. Can you, there were two more questions real quick. Can you link Dropbox accounts, um, OneDrive's G yep. Uh, yep. Yep. For, for remote upload of content? Yep. So there's a couple ways of doing this. Right now, the path is uh, use, for example, an FTP account that gets okay. forwarded to the drive. And essentially, the workflow on that is I can even show you here if I go back into the server. This um, the content's going to show up, and this is being uh, this is part of the of the rebuild here. It's going to show up as an unlinked file, so it's just sitting there. It's been uploaded. The operator comes in, finds the file, and then creates a new show record from that file. Once the show record is complete, it's ready to schedule and you can drop it into the schedule or you can make it available as a thumbnail on VOD. So a couple clicks and off we go. Um, the smart asset management software upgrade that we're doing here coming up in the next few weeks will include the ability to archive this stuff and set up additional rules that will move content back and forth between say a NAS drive or the cloud so, you know, if you have a lot of important content that you want to archive, the system will do that for you. And then you put another rule in that says, hey, if, if you haven't used this file in a while, you know, put it into the draw, into the archive. If you decide to use it again, bring it back. It all happens in the background and you never really think about it. But it's a smart system, you know, and, and you can see there's more and more automation being built into this. Oh, yeah, yeah. it's the one thing you guys do do. You, you, do. Always, you always expound. Yeah, I mean, this is part of what, you know, what we've had in this particular niche of the marketplace. It's been moving rapidly. And again, you know, government, you know, peg access users, as we call community media users in particular, um, the ball keeps moving, the game keeps changing. And you got to have a server system that's going to run for five years, 24 seven that you can yeah. count on with a company behind it. That's going to give you the upgrades when there are new features. So if suddenly, uh, I don't know, a new platform comes out of the blue and says, everybody's starting to watch TV on this new platform. Yeah. You better believe we're going to be there. You know? Sure. I think so, that covers us. Yeah, we've covered a lot. And um, I'm going to just finish by sh going back to the website a moment. Sure. Tablecast.tv. I want to slide over here, Paul, to documents and support. New user training. This is actually uh, full videos that have been chapter marked uh, that basically will show you a lot. In fact, all of the features that I've shown, plus others, in a on-demand you know, viewing uh, platform here. We use our system, obviously. So this was all brought in on a cable cast system. If you wanted to understand how does that autopilot thing work, you could click this, click play, and you'll see it'll it'll drop. autopilot is the activation of your schedule. Essentially, it creates an and so you'll have a voiceover with a screen share. Mm -hmm. And this is a nice way if you're looking for particular features or workflow issues. You know, I think this is where we really shine. There's a lot going on here. If you look at other systems, you can see this is really um, well-designed workflow and people love it. It's, it's easy. That's what we're looking for. Um, there is one more question by Michael Delisio. On the schedule page, I thought I saw a button for DSK, read show. What's oh, good. that for? Thank you. Let me go back to that. Um, so there's a couple of things that are happening here. Um, I'm going to show you that uh, you have the ability in this menu, and I'm, it's going to take me a couple of clicks to get here. It's called branding. 
this is a full on alpha channel brand uh, or downstream key feature. So I have a variety of bugs, text, or crawling text that I can layer over top of the output of the server. So if I want a watermark that stays, you know, on the screen all the time to identify who this is, that can be done from here. Um, and you can have multiple layers, up to four or five. Um, the other thing that's going on here, just, uh, just to make the point, is we also have the ability to do squeeze backs. So during the scheduling, there were breaks in the schedule. If I have a five-minute break between shows and I want to run a bunch of PSAs, but I also want to show the rest of that bulletin board, in what people sometimes refer to as an L frame, like an L. The video for those PSAs would squeeze down into this box. The information on that bulletin board, you know, we were looking at the bulletin board up here, wherever that was. I think I've lost it. But uh, my point is that when the next show is scheduled to run, it'll squeeze back to full frame and it'll continue through the sequence. So these are again, features I haven't talked about in the, in the demo here, but there, there are abilities to put graphics over top, overlay graphics on your videos. And I hope that answers Michael's question. I think so. There's one other way you can do this. Let me just be obnoxious about it. <laughs> be obnoxious. There's, Here's scheduling, right? These were all events. And I didn't finish showing you, you can do things like lock an event in place. Um, here's a CG that promotes the upcoming show. It takes a page from that bulletin board feature that has a nice looking graphic and it inserts a line from the show record that says coming up next, whatever you want it to say. You can turn that on and off, toggle that. And then here's a downstream key that will text over just this individual show yeah, yeah. so if it were a call-in show um and you don't want people to call in after oh. it's being replayed you just put the text in here you know record it on this date please don't call and every so often that'll crawl across the bottom of the screen or whatever you need it to do right. all right it's been fun paul randy thank you so very much yeah my pleasure i hope Folks have um, gotten something from this, and I appreciate you guys giving us the chance to show off this cool system. Um, and we appreciate working with G&G. &G. You guys do great work in the New York market, Massachusetts and beyond. Um, hey, you know, engage us. If you have other people on your team that you would like to show this to, you know, reach out to Paul. And, it will be uh, it will be uh, uploaded to our YouTube channel later today. This this particular demo, but I'm I'm suggesting if you would like me to do this for just oh, sure. your group, yeah, you time. have yeah we we've, we've done we've done online demos for customers a lot of times that we can yeah. get into the weeds and talk about your customized needs exactly. and specific needs. So sounds thanks great. for the opportunity. Appreciate it, Randy. Thank you. Be well. Okay, I'm going to stop my share. I think that's my last. There you go. There you go. All right. Everybody, thank you for attending and um, hope to see you again soon. Bye-bye. Take care.